Hello, it's Don Michelle and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing our spooky season edition of Playing With Pairs. I have six Halloween Samhain inspired pairings to share with you today. I just gathered together to see how they would work. Some of them are old favorites and some of them are new ones we're going to be trying out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in with these two. We have the Seasons of the Witch Samhain and in this bag, I have my Horror Tarot. So we'll do a quick little chat about each of the decks and then we will jump into the pairing. So here I have the Seasons of the Witch and this is a, a mass market oracle deck. It is part of the Seasons of the Witch. I think there's going to be eight of them. Yes, one for each of the Sabbaths. I do believe that series is wrapping up. This was the first one that they did and actually my favorite. And we're going to be pairing it with the Horror Tarot. This is again another mass market tarot deck. And it's one of my favorites, actually. I love this art style. I love this deck. I call this my Castlevania deck because it reminds me of that particular game, which I have been playing since it very first came out, I don't know, 20 some odd years ago. So I absolutely love this deck. I think it's a super fun one and I really love pairing it with the Seasons of the Witch. It just has a really great kind of spooky energy to it, but also pulls in that sort of witch in the woods kind of energy and I think they work really well together. So we're just gonna flip through a few of them, see what we think, see what kind of messages come out. Look at this with the, um, we have the two kind of white dresses and then this figure in the center who is completely nude. That's amazing. I love the way the imagery plays together in these two decks. I do have a bit of trouble with um, the titles on the horror tarot as I've mentioned many times before because the text is very tiny and it's red foil. So unless I turn it properly into the light, I really can't see it. But I absolutely adore the artwork on this deck. It is absolutely amazing. And we pair that with our single focus sort of keyword here in the middle with the Samhain Oracle, and it's just magic. It's just magic on the table. This pairing is so fun. It is spooky and has a little bit of shadow energy to it, but I love that we also get that kind of dark descent witchy sort of energy coming through with the Samhain Oracle as well. It really adds an interesting layer to the work with this deck. I've been pairing these two together this season and it's been really fun. I've paired the Horror Tarot with a lot of different things. It's actually kind of amazing how many different things it goes with in my collection. I love pairing it with the Diablo Tarot. I'm not doing any Tarot on Tarot pairings today, but that's also a great one because I work with the Diablo very similar to I would an Oracle, as in kind of a single card in the middle for a focal point. Um, it pairs beautifully with a lot of my black and white decks, with my very moody, gothic sort of oracle decks. But this pairing I think is really cool because it just kind of adds that sort of dark, wild, witch in the woods sort of energy coming through the oracle. But also we get that, you know, like I said, that sort of Castlevania kind of vibe in the tarot and I just love it. It's my favorite deck by this particular artist that they've come out with so far. I did have the other one for a while, but I far favor this one. And it has such a personal tie in to me for um, kind of that Castlevania sort of gothic literary horror kind of a world. Like it just really taps into it just beautifully. I love the way the keyword really sinks into um, what we've got going on with the tarot here. So we have grief between the four of wands and death. I mean, that's just absolutely beautiful. There is quite a bit of text on the bottom of the Samhain Oracle. I really don't read it. Um, I focus more on the keywords. I'm not a huge fan of the write-ups on the cards in this particular um, series of decks. I do think the artwork is really beautiful and I really like the uh, keywords. This deck is my favorite. I know they've switched artists and they're beautiful, but this is the one that I continue, continue to go back to and the one that constantly stays around. Uh, the others kind of go, come and go seasonally, but this one, this one lives where I can get to it all year long because even though we're talking about sp spooky season pairings here, it is not just a spooky season deck for me. So these two together have been so much fun. I've really been enjoying playing with them. Um, we have voices here between the two of pentacles and the eight of cups. 
love this idea of bringing the voices together and maybe working with them to help you move forward. I think they're just absolutely gorgeous. So we did the kind of horror, witch in the woods, Castlevania sort of a thing. And there is a little bit of a, a vampire vibe to the horror tarot, but let's go full on into the vampire realm now with Lilith's Oracle. And in this bag, I have my tarot of vampires. These two decks are amazing together. This is my Lilith pairing. So they are decks that I use when I work specifically with Lilith energy. Uh, my Tarot of Vampires, I have edged mine and I do believe this deck is actually out of print now. Um, I think you can still find it here and there, but it's no longer being offered by its original publisher. And so it might be a little bit hard to track down uh, from here on out. Uh, I really struggled with this deck. I'll be honest, like I really, really struggled finding its place and its purpose in my collection. Um, it is vampires and it's very like 1990s <laughs> vampires to me, 90s, early 2000s vampires, which is totally an aesthetic I love, but I really struggled to find a place for it in my uh, collection until I purchased the Lilith's Oracle. And this is a little indie deck, little indie Oracle. And I found that this is the deck that wants to pair with the Vampire Tarot and they pretty much work exclusively together. I really love this deck. It's quite amazing. It does have just found art on it. Um, I'll be honest, the keywords are really hard for me to read and I have to get into the book a lot of the time to really know what's going on, but they are gorgeous together. So I'll just do a little flip through of these two together so you can see how beautifully they work. Um, Lilith is synonymous with a uh, vampire lore and vampire uh, legacy. And so I think that energetically these work really well together. The way that I work with them is, is very different even though I'm doing them here as like a fun, spooky Halloween pull in the vampire energy uh, through these two decks. The way I actually work with them personally is that these are my decks for communion with Lilith. And they work beautifully for that. But since we are in spooky season and, you know, this this is the time of year for this sort of imagery, for this sort of uh, theme and motif. And I thought it would be fun to just kind of pull them out and, and give them a little play as, you know, just being a spooky season fun deck. Um, I do use them for, you know, very serious work, very serious uh, deity uh, communion but they can also be available to me for play and for exploration. I really enjoy working with these two together. It was really this Oracle deck that unlocked the tarot for me. And I love when that happens because now these two are like, they're a pair. They literally live together in a basket and they're always, always next to each other. And I work with them pretty much exclusively together. I think they're beautiful. I love the way the uh, Lilith energy comes through the Oracle and then kind of like is infused into the world of the Tarot Vampires here. Um, if, if you're unfamiliar with this deck and, and the guidebook, the guidebook by Ann Daniels is absolutely amazing. It is the whole reason I bought the deck in the first place was just to read the guidebook, which was fantastic. Um, I didn't really get on board with the deck for quite a while. I really struggled with trying to find its place. Until, again, I found that this is where it wanted to be. This is what it wanted to do in my collection. And that came about, you know, finding the Lilith Oracle and then pairing these two together and then realizing that this is how this deck, this deity, this energy uh, communes with me. And so it was so much fun to be able to find that. But just for a fun, spooky season, like bringing out all the sort of vampire, Lilith, goddess of the night kind of vibes, like this is it. This has got it. I think it's great. It's so much fun. Um, I really can't read the keywords on the bottom of the cards right now. I think this one says Dark Mother creation and destruction. I have to really pick them up to see them. Now, when I'm just reading for myself, that's fine. Uh, here on the table while I'm trying to film a video, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge, but that's okay. We can pick it up. Uh, this one says release guilt. Um, you are not your thoughts. I do believe is what it says. So release guilt between the seven of grails and death. How potent is that? And that's one of the things I really love about these decks together is like 
yes, they're fun and they've got that great creepy mother of the night sort of uh, dark energy vibe thing vampires going on. But like the messages, the messages are really deep and profound. And I really love that. I love decks that can be one thing on the surface and then you dive beneath of it and you're like, there's so much more going on there. And it's amazing. Let's see what we have here. We have submission. Um, where do you give your power away between the hanged man and the magician? Oh, how beautiful is that? See, the way the messages just come through these decks is so amazing. We did some horror tarot. We did some vampires. Let's go ahead and do some zombies. So in these two bags, I have my zombie tarot here, which is a beloved treasured deck in my collection. And over here in this bag, I have the... Uh, beyond, oh, is it beyond or between? I can never remember the name of this little Oracle deck. It's either between or beyond. I'll have it linked below. Um, the worlds, this little pocket Oracle. Now I have heavily modified this because I stamped all the keywords on these cards. Uh, I'll be honest because this is just like things and bones and doll parts. I really couldn't work with it outside of that. Um, but now that I've got them all stamped and accented with the keywords, like it, it works great. Um, I really enjoy this little oracle. It's actually really great to throw into a bunch of other readings. So like to add into it, but it stands on its own too. This is the zombie tarot. I have edged mine as well. I always try to point out whenever I've done a modification. I love this deck. I think this deck is so much fun. It's really, really smart. It's cheeky. It's got like the best a way that it reads and I really enjoy working with it. These two paired together are a lot of fun. Now I have paired the zombie tarot with so many things because it actually goes with a huge majority of my collection, which is fantastic. Um, but the way that I tend to work with these together just for fun since we're here is we have the two keywords. So when I'm doing a little three card reading with these, doing a little playing with my pairings here, I tend to relate one keyword to one card and one keyword to the other, whichever keyword is on top or on the left tends to be on the left side of the reading and what's ever on the right or on bottom tends to be uh, connected to the right side of the reading. So if I were reading this in a little three card, we would have access. So the main focus here is key. So what is giving me access? The emperor and what is blocking the devil. I mean, these are so smart together. I really, really enjoy working with them. I love um, this little deck now that I've added the keywords to it. I felt like that was really, really missing for me to make a connection. So I just added them myself. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. This is some stays on stamp and I just took my letter stamps and spelled it out and there you went. Uh, so we have connect with uh, temperance, disconnect with the queen of swords with that keyword of button in the middle. I think these work really well together and these are great to get kind of like a couple of different um, of these cards going on the table and then kind of pair them up with a couple of different decks. That's a lot of fun, but they do work beautifully, just the two of them together. We're getting kind of that creep factor a little bit with like the bones and the doll parts, but the keywords are really great. They're very succinct. Um, I think there's one or two that are repeated. That really doesn't bother me because I don't use a ton of cards at one time. So I don't often get those repeating keywords, uh, but for the most part, like this works beautifully. And I really enjoy the way they pair together. I think they look beautiful on the table. I think the energy of them is very compatible. They're both incredibly smart decks. I do really like the way that the keywords relate to the item, even though I was unfamiliar with them um, from the get-go, like a doll's leg. I don't didn't really have any uh, big connection to that myself personally, um, but adding those keywords of mobility and immobility really helps make the connection with this deck. So here we have heart with love and infatuation. I love this because I would actually, you could read infatuation as, you know, as actually like a shadow version of it. And I think that's one of the things that I really like about this little pairing together too. I feel like I get the light and shadow in a very balanced way across the cards and across the reading. And they just work so beautifully together. It's a great little pairing. Like I said, I have lots of decks that I enjoy pairing with the zombie tarot, um, but this is definitely a fun one. And often, if I'm being honest, this is not the only oracle I tend to have on the table when I'm working with the zombie tarot. Um, I tend to use this one and I'll pull more oracles in and just let this one kind of be the um, setting that light and shadow foundation for the reading. And then I'm moving on from there with additional oracles, additional tarots, and it works beautifully. But this, this little pairing is so much fun. 
I really, really love working with it. The Zombie Tarot is one of my favorite decks. It's like up there in the top in my collection. Um, it's such a great reader and it's got such a great energy, such a great sense of humor. I really, really enjoy it. So we'll just end here with the bell with aware and unaware with the moon and the two of wands. That's interesting because I would relate the aware to the moon and that might be um, an interesting sort of uh, energy to play with like when we are aware of the moon or when we are aware of what is unseen versus when we're unaware of these you know maybe these decisions that we're making over here these two different paths that we're taking and this guy feels a little bit like he's confused and he feels a little bit like his bells getting rung over here and I just think that's great like the way they work together is is so much fun I really really enjoy him so now we're gonna switch gears over to some ghosty energies so here I have my ghosts and spirits tarot with with its backs that completely confuse me and then here I have my southern uh, gothic oracle the backs like they're pretty cool together like they actually match although I don't know why the white and not the beige color but um, that's just you know designer nitpicky thing. These two decks are amazing together. I really, really enjoy them. The Southern Botanical Oracle is a favorite in my collection. I really love working with this deck. It has this amazing energy to it. It definitely sits in a very um, specific sort of place for me. It, it ties back into the, to the time I spent living in the Midwest, um, uh, closer down South. And uh, like, there's so many of these things that tie back into um, some things that we experienced and, and the life that we lived for a little while. And I really enjoy that. I mean, not everything uh, completely resonates, but it's really, really close and it's got a great sort of kind of down home Southern sort of energy to it. And there's a lot of, um, in this particular one, I do have the Haunts pack in here, which seems very appropriate for this time of year, which is the expansion pack for this particular deck. But a lot of what's in here um, does kind of lean into, we can lean into a little bit of that sort of supernatural energy. And I think that's really cool. Um, and I feel like that's really fitting with the Ghosts and Spirits tarot. Um, I've actually had this deck come and go for my collection a couple of times. And it really wasn't until I kind of did a little bit more of a deep dive and got into to the stories for these particular ghosts that I've really um, found a great connection with it. Um, it's a really fun reader, particularly for this time of year. And I think it does a really good job of kind of showing you like where things are a bit restless. Um, I'm gonna half this because that's really big. Oh, look, we got one of the um, haunts and spirits. That's perfect. So we got the Mothman here with the tower and the star. I mean, that's kind of perfect. The other thing I really love about this deck, like a lot of my oracles, is that um, it has two keywords on it. So again, just like I did with the Beyond the World or the little pocket one that I can never remember the name of, um, I tend to tie in one card to one keyword and one card to the other. So Mothman would be my focal points. Separation would be relating to the tower and transformation would be relating to the star and like how perfect is that. These two together are really gorgeous. They have this really interesting ability to pull out kind of that, um, I don't know if supernatural is quite the right word. There's like a magic here with these, but also what they do is kind of show me like what's kind of not being laid to rest here. Um, the ghosts, it feels restless. Like, where are we restless? Where are we not following through on things? Where are things, you know, uh, feeling like they're in turmoil? Um, kind of like that wandering, restless spirit sort of energy. And I love that the Southern Gothic kind of gives me like a, a succinct kind of key word and idea to tie into. So here we have like mason jar with mentorship and protection between the emperor and the six of wands. That kind of gives me the idea of maybe what I can do to help kind of lay this restless energy uh, to rest. And I think it works beautiful. I really love it. It has such a great like spooky season um, going into like a haunted forest, like full of restless spirits or like an old abandoned plantation. I mean, this is perfect. You could almost like set a scene with these where you've got this kind of like abandoned, um, forgotten thing or place or energy. And it shows like where it kind of keeps wandering around, where it's restless, how it's restless, and maybe what we can do to uh, put that to rest. Now a deck like this, I mean, that's not of course the only way that you could use it or, or um, 
want, might want to work with it. It's definitely the way that I tend to lean into working for with it because that tends to be how it reads for me is it's showing me what is um, restless, what needs to be laid to rest. But it is a traditional tarot in it and it works beautiful for just any sort of tarot reading. I've used it for all kinds of things, but I really, really like using it for that particular energy, like looking at what's haunting me, what is roaming around, what's restless, what needs to be uh, let go of, what needs to be released. And I think it works beautifully for that. So this is a really fun pairing and one I absolutely love working with, especially around this time of year. So let's switch gears a little bit and go even more into the kind of spooky season uh, with the Necronomicon. And this over here in this bag is the Memento Mori. Now this is not a uh, pairing that I've actually tried. So I want to get them out and just kind of have a play. So the Memento Mori is a indie oracle deck. I, I think I've forgotten to say sometimes when they are into your mass market. Those be links below. Um, I do have Patreon cards in here and extra packs. So this is quite a chunky, chunky Oracle deck at this point. It is a Oracle and full Lenormand. So there is an entire Lenormand in here as well. I really don't pay that much attention to the Lenormand associations. I just use them like uh, Oracle cards for the most part. And I really love working with this deck. So I thought we would try it with the Necronomicon. Uh, this is a deck that has really surprised me, like how much I actually like it. I think it's incredibly intelligent. I really like the depictions. I really like the interpretation of the tarot through it. And I think it's a really interesting deck. It's one that completely took me by surprise. It's got a very uh, unique sort of energy and it definitely I uh, think sits in that kind of spooky season vibe here. I'm going to take this way down because it's very big, but I have struggled with what to pair it with. So um, I thought I would give this a try because there's something about the kind of parchment paper. We've got the books. There's a whole suit of books, which I absolutely love. And I thought maybe the parchment paper with the kind of anatomical uh, illustrations in the uh, Memento Mori might uh, work really well. Now the thing with the Memento Mori is it doesn't have actual keywords. It just has kind of like the thing, whatever it is. So like this is an urn. But most of the things in this deck, I know what they mean to me on a personal level. So I really haven't struggled to work with it um, because I have my own sort of personal associations to what these things mean. And I, I really enjoy being able to work with it in that way. So I thought we'd just kind of try these two together. If you have any suggestions for a great pairing for the Necronomicon, definitely let me know in the comments below because I'm still kind of looking for the right pairing for this deck. I really enjoy working with it. It's definitely one that I feel like um, I'm more tempted to get into towards the darker half of the year. It definitely has that spooky season um, sort of mad scientist kind of energy thing going on. And it kind of feels like... Um, like a haunted house that you would go to where they have, you know, the, the rooms where there's the mad scientist and then there's the, I don't know, the crazy clowns. And like, I'm, I'm actually, because I don't like to be scared. I'm not a haunted house person. I, I don't really like going to haunted houses. I don't like scary movies. Um, this is about the extent of the scary that I like, like in my decks, uh, scary books are totally fine, but haunted houses and scary movies, clearly this deck is still uh, bleeding on my hands. Scary movies and haunted houses are an absolute no for me if I can at all avoid them. But I love it in my decks and I love it in my books. Um, it's totally fine. So anyway, I would love to know like if you have any suggestions for what to pair with this. This is really beautiful with our two aces and the anchor in between. Like the idea of being really rooted and grounded into this primal energy is really cool. I really enjoy it. Um, I just thought this would be a fun one to play with. We have the embalming fluid between the Ten of Pentacles and Change. So the Wheel of Fortune. I love that the title for the Wheel of Fortune is Change. There are a few um, major arcanas in this deck that have been changed. Like this one for Sacrifice is amazing. I love it. Um, again, I think it's really, really smart. And I really like the interpretations of the tarot. So here we have the crossroads, kind of that idea of, of making a choice here with the queen of bakers and sacrifice. Like, what are you going to choose to sacrifice in order to cultivate this thing that you're trying to create? I think that's really cool. Cure with the ace of books and madness. 
that's potent. That's potent because this ace of books is all like bound up. And then we have this madness over here and like this inability to access this knowledge, this understanding, the thing that you need that's driving this madness. And here we have the cure in between. If I were doing this as a reading, I would absolutely be pulling cards underneath this to see what the cure is, right? Here's the situation and what's the cure underneath that. That would be a really fun reading to do. Um, and see how things would, would come out. I really love that in a lot of these cards, we have a lot of that kind of um, greenery and growth and kind of that mossy uh, energy going on. And we have all the plants in the Memento Mori. And I think they do work really well together. Viewing table between the Four of Pentacles and the Six of Books. Interesting, interesting. I do like it. I think it works really well. I like the kind of... Um, balance between the sort of light and dark in terms of the coloration on the table my eyes definitely being drawn to the imagery in the center first and foremost then it's flowing out to really get into the details of these cards because i think the artwork is actually really beautiful in this deck i really like it i think it's a wonderfully done deck so the last little pairing that i want to do today is one of my ultimate favorites and it is the le vampire oracle and in this bag i have my madam lydia wilhelminas i have to think madam lydia wilhelminas tarot of the monsters the macabre and autumn scenes this is the second edition i do believe this deck is out of print we have the le vampire over here so these two decks together are pretty amazing i really love them this is kind of a an favorite from the last few years um i have edged both of these decks this is the uh, lucy cavendish with the Jasmine Beckett Griffith imagery. This is my absolute favorite one of these. I do believe I have all, if not most of them. It took me a long time to come around to these big eyed girls, but I absolutely love them now. And this one is by far my favorite. I think it's a great reader. It's really smart. I love the keywords and it has such a great energy to it. And I really love pairing it with my Madame Lydia's. Again, I have edged this one too. Um, I do believe this is an out of print deck. It is a uh, digital art photo manipulation and like it's, it's beautiful, it's macabre, it's very autumnal. Um, I really love this deck. It's got such a unique energy to it. And when you pair these two together, they do something pretty interesting because we've got this like sort of innocence, but not coming through with the big eyed girls. And then we have these more, um, they're definitely macabre, but also more mature scenes with the Madame Lydia's. And I feel like these two together kind of blend that idea. I'm going to kind of have this because that's really big. Um, kind of blend that idea of the Halloween energy of like, we still, even as adults, we can still dress up. We can still um, partake in the festivities. We can, we can be childlike for a time. And even though this is like a macabre deck and there's there are very dark scenes and very uh dark themes represented in these two decks but something about these two decks together just kind of give my adult self permission to play and to explore and remember what it was like to experience something like Halloween um, as a child. You know, when you got to dress up and play fantasy and like, let's face it, like I like to live in a fantasy world a lot of the time. I spend a lot of my time in games and books and things like that that are in that fantasy world. But this reminds me also that that energy, that play can come through in these cards as well and in this work. And it's such an interesting one. I really like them together. Again, also keywords, love the keywords. They um, have the title at the top here. So we have like religion and then keywords. We have canon rules and commandments. Again, I might be using um, the keywords to create like a reading around that. So if we're looking at the 10 of cups and the eight of cups, I mean, religion is maybe something that you need to be walking away from, right? Those, those rules, those commandments that maybe keep you bound. Here we have prey with stalked, invaded, and watched between the six of coins and the four of cups. I'm definitely getting that idea of being watched in that four of cups, right? It's really beautiful, and I love the way they work together. It's such an interesting little combo. Sometimes the colors are just amazing across. You get these, like, um, threads that kind of go through the, the three cards together. It's a lot of fun. 
So yeah, we'll just do one more because I really love this pairing and I think it's just such a unique, fun one. So we have redemption with absolution, forgiveness, and penance between the king of coins and the king of wands. How interesting is that, our redemption between our two kings? I love that. So that's just a few of my favorite little pairings for spooky season. I would love to know what you thought of these pairings and if you have any suggestions or any of your favorite spooky season pairings, definitely leave them in the comments below for me. I'd love to hear all about them. In the meantime, you'll find links for everything I've shown here in the description box of this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I look forward to sharing with you again soon.